In previous units, we have seen how voltage sources in series can be added together in order to simplify a circuit by reducing the number of components. When dealing with resistors in series, we're going to see that we have a very similar relationship. We're going to get something called a re equivalent resistance, or REQ. And that's going to simplify a circuit by reducing the number of components we have to consider. Resistors can also be uh, combined in parallel. However, in this video, we're only looking at series combinations. It's easiest to begin with an example. Consider this circuit. And in the circuit, we are going to have three resistors. For simplicity, I'm going to make sure they're all only one ohm. Now, we want to solve the circuit. If you remember from the previous video, what that means is to find all of the currents and all of the voltages for every single one of the components. Because they're in series, they share a current that we're going to call I. However, they don't share a voltage. So let's label them. Remember, the reason I'm choosing the polarity this way is because in a resistor, current enters the positive terminal. So, the techniques we have to solve the circuit are Ohm's law, and in this case, KVL. KCL won't help us too much because we don't have multiple different nodes. Ohm's law right now won't really help us, because what we would need to know is V1, V2, and V3 in order to find the current I, but we don't know that. So let's use KVL, and let's see what we end up with. Moving this way in the circuit, my KVL equation states that 3 volts minus V1 minus V2 minus V3 equals 0. As before, this isn't really helping much, but now I can use Ohm's law, and let's see how. By Ohm's law, I have a current through a resistance to give me a voltage. So V1 really is I, the unknown current, multiplied by the resistance, which is 1 ohm. Similarly, V2 is I, the unknown current, multiplied by 1 ohm, and I3 is I times 1 ohm as well. So let's replace it. I have 3 volts minus 3I equals to 0. And solving directly, I can see that I is 1 amp. Let's take a look at what happened here, because something is very important. Notice how these three voltages that contain the same current essentially collapsed into a single common term. Let's redo this example, but now with general resistors. Let's not worry about what their values are. I'm going to call them R1, R2, and R3. And let's see what happens. So to redraw the circuit, this time I'm going to call this R1 R2, and R3. I'm going to keep this as 3 volts. Now, I once again want to solve the circuit. In order to do that, I'm going to have to find all of the unknown currents and unknown voltages. You might ask yourself in the first example why I didn't solve for the unknown voltages. The reason for that is because for a resistor, once you know the voltage, you know the current, and once you know the current, you know the voltage. Since we knew there was one amp through the one ohm resistors, we knew that all three voltages were three volts. I beg your pardon, one volt. Let's carry on. As before, I have V1, V2, and V3. I've kept this as three volts, but that's only so that we don't have to deal with too many variables. It could be a generic voltage source as well. Once again, I'm going to use KVL. 3 volts minus V1, but V1 is I R1, so minus I R1. Similarly, V2 is I R2, and V3 is I R3. So I have minus I R1 minus I R2 minus I R3 equals to 0 by KVL. In these terms, I can factor I out. Let's do that. 3 volts 
is i multiplied by r1 plus r2 plus r3. Just so you know there, I move these also over to the other side, just so that I can deal with positive numbers. This might remind you, in a sense, of Ohm's law. Ohm's law says V equals I times R. I have a voltage, in our case it was 3 volts. I have a current. And this is my R. So, I might refer to this, sum of the resistors, as something called REQ. It's a very common way of writing it. This means R equivalent. Much in the same way when we dealt with voltage sources, equivalent doesn't mean that I can just completely replace it in my circuit. For instance, all three of these might be individual light bulbs. I can't just buy a single larger light bulb because that might not actually solve the problem my circuit's designed to solve. But from the perspective of analysis, and specifically solving the circuit, this is an equivalent way of drawing the circuit with an equivalent resistance. So what I can do is rewrite my equation as 3 volts is I R E Q. In general, when I'm not just dealing with 3 volt source, it'll be the voltage source is equal to I R E Q. So what can we gain from this? Resistors in series add together. In fact, this doesn't just work for three resistors, it works for an arbitrary number. So we will say that REQ, when we are in series, is the sum from I equals 1 to N, the number of resistors, RI. In our example above, the very first example we did, all of the resistances were the same. So let's redo that example, and let's take a look at how we might redraw the circuit, do the analysis, and solve. I'm going back to the original one we drew, with 3 volts, because I want to use real numbers here. Now, we've already known that I is equal to 1 amp. But let's see what I meant when I said the word equivalent. The first step in simplifying a circuit is to compute what is REQ. REQ is the sum from I equals 1 to N, in this case N is 3, I have 3 resistors, of RI. In my case, R1 equals R2, which equals R3, which equals to 1 ohm. So REQ is the sum from 1 to 3 of 1 ohm, which is 3. Now, I can put this into my circuit by redrawing it with the voltage source left the same and REQ drawn as the only resistance there. Let's do that. Notice the current didn't change. The current in series hasn't been modified by collapsing those resistors into REQ because the circuit is essentially equivalent with regards to the current. So I can now use Ohm's law directly. V is I REQ. My V is 3 volts. I is unknown. And REQ is 3 ohms. Therefore, I is 1 amp. We're not done yet, though. We want to solve the circuit. I alluded to this in the beginning of the video and saying, well, since we know what the current through the resistors are, we can just multiply it by the resistance and get the voltage. However, notice how we've essentially lost that information. We don't know what the individual resistors are. We need to go back. So we now say, I know what this is. I can now redraw my original circuit 
and start working on the individual voltages. And this is one ohm, one ohm, and one ohm, and three volts, which means that I have V1 is one amp times one ohm, or one volt. V2, similarly, is one amp times one ohm. And V3, let's put the plus and the minuses in there, one amp times one ohm, or one volt. Now my circuit is solved. To prove that, I know the current. That same current is flowing through my voltage source, my resistors 1, 2, and 3. Therefore, I know the current through every single element in my circuit. Similarly, I know what this voltage is, 3 volts. And I've solved for these 3 voltages. Therefore, I also know the voltages across every single element in my circuit. That is the definition of solving a circuit, so we're done. The key takeaway from this is that in more complex circuits, we can reduce that complexity by using equivalent circuits. What this helps us to do is it simplifies the analysis. However, oftentimes once we've done that simplification, we need to go back to the original circuit, expand it out again, and if we're looking to solve the circuit, actually figure out for each individual element what we have. So, simplifying doesn't solve the problem for us, but it does make it easier to find the solutions.